Am I? Hello. Three minutes goes so fast, doesn't it? It goes so quickly. Come grab yourselves a seat. Well, things are a little bit different this morning because it is Vision Sunday. And uh, Liberty Church London is part of a global family. Uh, And I use that word family because that's what it really is, of local churches. So local churches which belong to a family. And we share a name, Liberty Church, um, but we're in different locations and different cities and we look different in different areas. Just like I've got two kids, uh, Nevaeh and Josiah, and they have the same DNA, they have the same surname, but they're completely different because they're in the same family, but they're both their own individual person. And that's sort of how Liberty Church is around the globe. There's different ones. There's Liberty Church in London, there's Liberty Church in New York City, and there's Liberty Church in Manzini, which is Eswatini in Southern Africa. And each church is has the same DNA, the same sort of vision and values, but is also its own unique church. And so Tasha and I have the honor and the privilege of leading Liberty Church London. But David and Carrie, you met David and Carrie briefly, have the honor of leading the global family. We have the honor of serving under them. They are really our pastors. Uh, We, as pastors, have pastors, which is very important because uh, pastors offer spiritual covering and care and support and that's what they do for us. So we're so grateful for you guys for doing that. Um, it means that Tash and I aren't leading just in a vacuum on our own. We are actually got people who support us and cheer us on and help us and encourage us and advise us. Um, so David and Carrie are going to share in a few minutes uh, about the vision for 2020. Not 2020. What year is it? Where are we? 2020? 2020. What's that say? 2024? When did that happen? My daughter turns 10 in a couple of weeks and as far as I'm concerned, she is still six. I don't know. I'm not okay with this moving forward of time thing. This linear passing of time, I don't like it. Um, 2024, the vision for, t- for this coming 12 months, whatever 12 months that may be, the t- coming 12 months, uh, David and Kerry are going to share the vision for us as a global family, because we're part of that family, which is really exciting. And then after they've shared, uh, I'm going to come back up and going to talk about, well, what, that, what does that look like for us in London specifically? Um, we wanted to show a short video, um, uh, which just just kind of sets the tone that we're part of this global family. So if you didn't know we're part of a global family, you're going to see photos of people who are within our family from around the world. And then David and Carrie will come up. So if you want to turn your attention to the screens. Oh, oh, you put it in for later. You know what? Videos are overrated, right? What we're going to do instead, it's going so smooth. Can we welcome, can we welcome David and Carrie? To, come up, David and Carrie. Well, that's no worries. You'll get to see that uh, later. Uh, that's good. Uh, hey, we're just so, we are so glad to be here. We love coming to London uh, every time and, and visiting the church and being a part of uh, Liberty London here. And, and you know, I just want to to say hey to a couple of people who have also uh, come in for Vision Sunday. Vision Su- Sunday is such an important uh, Sunday. We have with us uh, Matt and Don Sadler. Would you welcome them uh, with me? Matt and Don have been a part of the Liberty Church family for a decade, and they have been a part uh, nearly from the beginning and just recently have now moved to Portugal, uh, and they are living in Portugal and continuing their work with Liberty Church Global, and they have uh, just just uh, just hopped on over uh, to the UK here, leaving Europe, because uh, that's what, uh, it's not Europe here, uh, but and come on, coming on up to uh, to be with us here in the UK, and we're just so glad that they're here. Make sure you get a chance to meet them. Uh, and I also uh, want to say hey to Gethin and Bex, who have joined us, and you know them. They've been a part of Liberty London uh, for uh, from the beginning, and they are on our uh, Gethin serves on our board of deacons, uh, and uh, so we get to have an in person board meeting. Matt's also on that board today for the first time. Normally we're doing it in two dimensions on Zoom, so this is so great. Uh, they're all the way over from from Wales, and um, we're excited. We're going to go spend a couple days with them and hike through the mountains in Wales or whatever it is, valleys, whatever it is. I'm excited about it. I just all I know is I want to get my Wrexham uh, kit, so that's what I'm that's what I'm most excited about. But it's super. It's been great being here. Uh, everybody in London is super welcoming to us. Uh, we did have one moment that was a little awkward. We were in a cab, 
and um, he was listening to talk radio. And then uh, when after we communicated, he it, like clearly intentionally turned off the talk radio and put on music. And he put on Green Day, specifically the song American Idiot. So I don't think that was accidental. I felt like that was very True intentional. Story. But, you know, other than him, everyone has been really welcoming to us. And, uh, and, and we're really, we really love, uh, love being here. A little, uh, yeah, polite hospitality uh, from, from, from them. Is the video ready? Let's do it. Let's, let's watch that video. For this reason... Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels everything in every way. Wow. <laughs> That's so great to see. I'm glad we got to watch that. Um, and if you were here last week, I just want to start with celebrating a couple things before we go into the vision. If you were here last week, you maybe saw a little video clip of what we are celebrating in Manzini with the property uh, purchase in that community. And God was just miraculous in providing the funds for that community. That was an act of faith on the part of Lou and Zinti, the local pastors there. And we just saw him provide in such an amazing way. And so excited to celebrate that. And so excited to celebrate a couple things in New York as well. In New York, God has provided unity in the community as two communities have come together as one and added their strength to one another. And we've seen him expand what's happening there and expand the space that we've been able to invite families into and in expand the space for kids and just add strength to what's happening there and add another service so that there's more room for more people. So it's just been exciting to watch what's happening there as well. And in your community here, you guys have experienced so many things this year, a lot of firsts this year in London, the first elders that we just were blessed to play, pray over, as well as the first uh, membership. 19 of you stepped into the charter Church. class of membership this year, and that's huge, and that's exciting. Yeah. Membership is one of those things that we talked about when it when we talk about what you know what it takes for a church to have that longevity, and that's one of the pillars uh, of of strength for a church is to have membership. And that was, if you, <laughs> I'm sure you all remember last year's Vision Sunday. That was one of the things that we emphasized uh, that we wanted to do in Liberty Church, and we've done that across all of the communities. And that's a really big step uh, for you guys. Really well done for every one of you who stepped into membership. Yeah. Amen. And also, you guys have had your first and your second water baptism service. We saw some of those on the video. So, yeah, that's huge. Amen. Those are always great stories to hear and be a part of those Sundays are always some of my favorite Sundays. And across all the communities, I imagine you can testify to this, that there has been life change. You have seen life change. You have experienced it in yourselves. You have seen it in the people sitting next to you. All the answered prayers, as Anthony was was mentioning this morning. We've been seeing that across all the communities, and we're just so thankful to God for that. And each community also has experienced challenge, 
And thankfully, they haven't walked through these challenges alone. Being part of a network has brought them strength. And so we're celebrating that even in the challenges, there is strength in the unity that we find in the network. And we've seen that across all the communities as well. Absolutely. Yeah. The, as Johnny mentioned, the, the fact that we are all part of a family is so significant. You know, um, a lot of times pastors will ask me, we talk about churches and, and what makes Liberty Church unique. And I, I think that it has to be that we have a global vision for the local church. Like we love the local church. It's in the local church that, as as you mentioned, that lives are changing, that, that cities are being reached. Uh, and, and we have this vision to do this, not just as one individual spot in each city, but globally connected. And, you know, every one of our Liberty Churches uh, in New York, in London, in Eswatini, they're all very unique. I mean, uh, you, you, the, the people in the seats and are part of the community are unique. Uh, the, the cities that you are in uh, are unique. The context, uh, the, the challenges that you face and the ways that you approach to overcome. And they're all led by uh, leaders like Johnny and Tasha, who uh, God has given unique gifts and vision. Uh, and, and yet for all of the things that make each one of these communities distinct, there's an incredible unity. Uh, between them. And, you know, we kind of describe Liberty Church as a growing global family of Jesus-centered local churches. And that's where our unity comes, is that we're Jesus-centered. Every one of our churches, we're, we don't have an agenda. We don't have a political agenda. Jesus is our agenda in every one of our churches. Uh, Jesus is our reason. He's our hope. He's our message. Uh, and so we find unity. And, and uh, the theme for this Vision Sunday is for this reason. And it's because we are Jesus-centered local churches, it's for this reason that we all have collectively one mission, uh, and that's to know Christ and to make him known uh, in the city, in our cities, but also uh, across across the world. Uh, and that's what, that's what moves us, that's what drives us, uh, and, and I think that's really what stands out about uh, Liberty Church. Yeah, and we believe there's purpose in this too. We believe that God is calling Liberty Church globally to step into an expanded role in his kingdom and what we're seeing happening. And it is, uh, there's been some alarming statistics coming out about the church. I'm not sure if you're aware of these, but I just want to share a few with you. And that is that um, 42% of pastors currently are saying that they're ready to quit. <laughs> they're struggling. And the things that they're struggling with are the intensity under, of the pressure that they're under. They feel lonely and they feel isolated. We can relate to all of these things from our time in ministry. They're struggling to, um, it, to support their families, but to actually keep their families healthy as well. They're struggling with a lack of resources and a lack of training. And because of that, the churches are struggling as well. And churches are seeing, for every two churches in the U.S. that are opening, three churches are closing. And here in the UK, for every two churches that are opening, four churches are closing. We're losing ground. We're losing ground, yeah. yes. And so while these statistics may be initially alarming, what we believe is that there is a calling and a purpose in that. And we want, as a network, to step into that space and to provide that support for those churches and for those pastors who are struggling. Yeah, there's an incredible opportunity, and even churches that you would know across uh, London, across the UK, it, it's it's true all across uh, the board. And 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 you know we have we we have experienced the value of the local church. We know how important it is, and so we feel that like God is leading us into this a avenue of the story of the church right now uh, is to come alongside these pastors and these churches. We want to see more churches uh, planted. Yes. We also want to see fewer churches close. Amen. Yes? Yeah. Uh, and so we, uh, we, our vision for 2024 is we are going to be launching a Liberty Church network. And what that, what we aim to do is to come along, alongside these pastors and churches that are not already connected to a network, to come alongside and provide the peer to peer uh, connection and support that Johnny and Tasha can talk about that they experience as being a part of, of Liberty Church. Uh, as well as offering consulting and coaching for, for pastors where they're stuck and where they need to grow. And that's uh, such a large role that Matt and Don play for our community. Uh, and we want to also be able to, to provide that pastoral oversight and care, as Johnny mentioned, uh, because pastors need pastors. Uh, and, and we want to be able to provide them with the resources and the policies and the procedures and the structures, the things that may seem unsexy, uh, but they're the things that create stability and strength. And it's just stuff 
stuff that we've learned. We've been in ministry for 25 years and pastoring the local church, and we've seen these things, and, and we want to help pastors experience that so that they can accomplish their vision and their mission in their city, in their neighborhoods uh, where they're at. And so that's where we feel called uh, as a church to collectively come alongside pastors and to see that happen for the sake of the global church. Yeah. So we want to give you a few ways that you can come along on this journey with us, and we ask you to think about investing in this vision. And the most important way that you could do that is please pray. Amen. Please pray for us as we lean into this vision. Please pray for us that we would be led by the Holy Spirit to have the divine connections at the right time with the right pastors and with the right churches who are in need. That was a lifeline for us. We were able to connect with people at the right time. And so if you would just pray for those divine connections to happen at the right time as we lean into this vision for 2024, we would really honor your prayers. You know, and the other thing is that, you know, one of the, the ways that you think, well, what can we do be a part of this? Is this just your bag? No, this is all of us together. And, and the way that we strengthen the global church uh, as individuals is when we, is, way, is when we lean into our local church. Uh, and the second way, in addition to prayer, is also to go all in here in your local church. Johnny's going to come up in a second uh, and just talk to you about what the vision is, how this gets applied in the local church. We've got a vision and, and, a, and a lean I was just talking with John before. Do you see something that God's doing in all of these churches across the board? And, and the thing that we see again and again is that God is calling his people into real discipleship. Uh, and that's an emphasis that we have in all of our churches in this coming year. We want to see you. We want to see people, your friends, your family, people who you've never, haven't even met yet who are going to come through this door. We want to see people follow Jesus uh, for real. We want to see people find freedom from every, uh, in every area of their life. We want to see people discover purpose. Uh, meaning our place in God's purpose of redemption uh, in the city. We want to be making a difference in the cities and the neighborhoods that we live. And so lean in, go all in, whatever's, whatever is being offered from community groups uh, to discipleship opportunities, uh, serving on the team, outreach, go all in in your local church because it's the strong local churches that provide strength uh, to others. And that's where we see the global church strengthen. Yeah, and over the next few weeks, you're going to be hearing about something that we call the vision offering, and you're going to have some opportunities to invest in these visions if you please pray about it, if pray if you would be led to invest. And just to give you a bit of information, the way that vision offering is going to be used is going to be used a, par a portion of it to fund the global vision. There's also a portion of it going to go back directly to each of our current communities. And then lastly there will be the remainder of it going to our global missions partners. Yeah, we've set a we've set a, a faith goal this year. Um, I mean, meaning like a really big goal uh, for for this year. And we're just we believe it's something that God can do. We've seen Him do it before. We've seen Him blow away our expectations before. Uh, and so we are stepping into this, and we're going to be talking about it over the next three weeks, specifically what that is. Uh, and you know, we're excited uh, for what God's doing locally, what He's doing globally, what He's doing globally through the church, and was as well as what He's doing globally through missions. Uh, and and you're going to have an opportunity to hear about missions trip opportunities coming up. I mean, even if you just want to hear an amazing thing that God's put on the hearts of Gethin and Bex, you should catch them before they leave, because uh, they're are, they are two of our, our supported missionaries. Uh, but we want to lean into that. And so you'll have a have an opportunity to lean into all of those all of those three things. But we just want to thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support, for your commitment. Um, you know, I... I, I I cannot thank you enough for all that you do to support uh, the vision here at Liberty London. Uh, and, I, and we just want you to know that we believe in you. We are excited to be here and excited to be a part of it. Pastor Johnny, would you come? Oh, thank you very much. I'm so excited about all that God is going to do in us and through us as a church, not just here in London, but around the world. It is, it really is a privilege to be part of. And sometimes we can, we can be getting on with our own thing in our own sort of, in our own lane and not realize actually even simply by being part of this family, we're having an impact in the lives of people we'll probably never meet in countries we may never visit around the world, which is so exciting and such a privilege and such a blessing of being part of a body of a family that stretches around the world. I just want to talk for a few minutes about London. 
But first, I want to tell you a story. And this is one of those stories which uh, I thought, shall I tell this? And Because I've heard that maybe it's not 100% true. But then I thought, why would you let the truth get in the way of a good story? So... Let me tell you this story. It's something that happened in 1976. There were two friends who uh, were really into tech, into computers, and they built a computer in one of their father's garages. And they worked out that this was a good computer and people were interested in it, interested in it, and they found a way to sell that computer. So they made a few more and they sold those computers too. And they made a few more and they made a few upgrades and they sold those too. And this, these, these two friends who started building a computer in a friend's, in one of their father's garages, they, they created a computer company. And it was actually working. Something was happening. People liked the products they were making, and people were buying the products they were making. And one of the friends in particular, he, he knew that they could take this global. They could build something really special with this computer company. And they did everything they could. They hired some people. They got them uh, to help build these computers. But they knew that until they got a grown-up in charge, it was never going to go anywhere. So they, they, really, they realized they needed a CEO, like a professional CEO who would take the reins and take the company to a whole other level. And they weren't thinking small. They were thinking big. So they wanted, to, they wanted one particular CEO, a guy called John Scott. Scully. John Scully was the CEO of Pepsi Cola. Now, Pepsi has always been second place to Coca-Cola in the fizzy drinks business. But under John Scully's leadership, they'd made some gains. They'd gone from being really, really far behind to being really, really not quite as far behind. Uh, and they'd made those gains because he knew how to market products well. He knew how to sell Pepsi better than Coke knew how to sell Coke. And so that was the guy they wanted to be in charge to lead this small sort of str struggling computer company that was started in a garage in California. And one of the one of the friends, he made a few attempts to try and get John Scully to get to get involved. But John Scully was living the life. He was CEO of Pepsi Cola. He was getting paid. There were guarantees. He had a good income. He had a good job. Everything was going well. Why would he leave that and go to what was basically a startup? So he was resistant to the idea. But, but one of the friends, he managed to get him to come and sit down and have a meal with him. And this is where he delivered the now legendary and maybe fictitious uh, pitch where he said to him, he said, listen, John, you can stay at Pepsi and make sugared water for the rest of your life, or you can come with me and we can change the world. And he left uh, Pepsi that day. He made the decision and he joined that company. That company you may have heard of, it's called Apple Computers. Anyone heard of Apple? And the man who made the pitch was a guy called Steve Jobs. Now, I love that story, and I like to think it's true because I love that invitation. Come with me and change the world. And they really did change the world. Apple has changed the world. Um, in fact, Apple is a fantastic case study of how human enthusiasm and effort and striving can make something very special. In the power of humans, just working super hard, being really creative, being very visionary, you can build something amazing. They built something incredible that has touched the whole world and changed the life as we know it. And they did it not, not because God was on their side, but just because they had an idea and they were creative and they worked really, really hard. Now, we, as we're thinking about Liberty Church London over the next year, hey, we, humans can do something pretty cool. In fact, I know people in this church community. I know this church is filled with really intelligent people with super smart, work in business, work in the creative industries. I reckon, honestly, if we got together and we really decided to make this happen and we were like, hey, we're going to put our blood, we'll sweat our tears into this. We're going to get all our best ideas. We're going to get all our best creative thinking. We're going to get all our best marketing plans. And we're going to put them together and use every ounce of in like intelligence that is within our church community to build build a church, I think we could do a great job. I think we could. I think we could build a church in our own strength that would have an impact that people, other people from other churches would talk about as like a really great church. I reckon we could impact, not even hundreds, I reckon we could impact thousands of people if we just get our, if we make a decision, we're, just gonna, we're all going to go all in on this and we're going to build this thing. We're going to make it happen. Liberty Church London, it's going to be epic. We're going to have a really fantastic venue. The music's going to go through the, re we're going to make this happen. I think we could. I think we could. Problem is, I don't want to. 
I don't want us to build a brilliant church in our own strength. It's tempting, don't get me wrong, especially there's been times when I'm like, maybe we can just do this and make it happen. It's very tempting, but I don't want to. Because for human beings, two plus five will always equal seven. For human beings, two plus five will always equal seven. Even if we bring our best ideas and our hardest work and the smartest thoughts we can possibly have and you know, creative things that no one's ever done before, even if we bring the best things we possibly can bring to the table, and I know there is so much that this community can bring to the table, two plus five will always equal seven. There's a story in Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21, in of Jesus. Let me read it to you. It says, Jesus heard what happened. Uh, so he, what had happened. So he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and he healed the sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that he can go, so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Verse 16, Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Uh, They answered, sorry, bring them here to me, Jesus said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves of bread and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who were who ate was around 5,000 men besides the women and children. 5,000 men besides the women and children. So what, 15, 20,000 people were fed with five loaves of bread and two little fishes. In the hands of human beings, even with our best efforts, five plus two will only ever equal seven. But with God, Five plus two can feed 5,000 men, 20,000 people. With God, what is possible with human hands is multiplied beyond our wildest dreams and understanding and expectations. So when I say I don't want to build a church in our own strength, it's not because I don't want us to build a church which impacts people's lives, because I do. It's not because I, I want to build a church which, which doesn't, doesn't go beyond these four walls and what we have now. I, I, we're in a city of 9 million people and there's not a single person who I don't think needs Jesus. But I just don't want to do it in our strength. I don't want to do it by striving. I don't want to do it by us burning ourselves out, working 12 hours a day, doing nothing else and being focused on building a church. What I want us to do is say, okay, Jesus, this is your church. We want you to build your church as you say in the Bible and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, but you can build through us. We are vessels that you can use to build your church. And this isn't without a, this isn't without precedent. This isn't without precedent. About half a mile away from where we are right now is Fetter Lane. In fact, I know some people's offices are on Fetter Lane who are part of our church community. Fetter Lane, it's just in the city of London. It's, it's, it's a road like many other roads. But on that road, on Fetter Lane in, uh, in 1738, on New Year's Eve, there was a prayer meeting of about 60 people. They gathered to pray in the new year. And as they prayed, the Holy Spirit came in a way that none of them had experienced before. And it was incredible. And they left that place and they went out. uh, And from that prayer meeting, millions of people came to know Jesus. Millions of people. It was the start of the great awakening. Two of the pe- a few of the people there were uh, the Wesley brothers, who are famous for, around the world as being evangelists and missionaries and revivalists, and a man called George Whitfield. Now, George Whitfield later said um, in his diaries about what happened as a result of that prayer meeting. He said, sometimes whole nights were spent in prayer, often have been, often, uh, have been filled as with new uh, sorry, often we have been filled as with new wine and often have been seen, uh, we have seen them overwhelmed with the divine presence and crying out, will God indeed dwell upon, uh, with men upon the earth? Then he went on to say, this is none other than the house of God and the gates of heaven. 
You see, that sounds good to me. See, what happened on Fetter Lane, that one night, that prayer meeting, wasn't the end of it. That was the start of it. That started a lifestyle, a rhythm of praying, of seeking after God, and by a group of people passionately following Jesus, seeking after him with all their hearts, all their souls, all their bodies, all all their minds, God showed up and worked through them, and millions of people came to know Jesus, not just in London, but across the world. This huge, great awakening impacted major cities everywhere, major cities everywhere. Churches were opening at a far greater rate than they were closing down, which is the opposite of what we have now. Churches were opening across the world, and God was showing up and impacting lives. That sounds good to me. That's what I hope and pray that Jesus will do through us as a church community. I don't want us to build something in our own strength. I want God to build something through us. Something incredible, something authentic, something real that changes lives. I was going to bring, I forgot to bring it, uh, one of Josiah's football shirts. My little boy, he's he's uh, nearly seven years old. And um, I'm from Liverpool originally. And he was born in Liverpool. And the very was born in Liverpool. And I have a mission to brainwash my children to support Liverpool. Uh, I think it's the only good and right thing to do that they should support Liverpool Football Club. All their friends support teams like Arsenal and Tottenham. And I just believe there's better for them. I really do. And so as part of my mission to manipulate my children to support Liverpool, uh, I make sure we buy them Liverpool football kits a lot. But let's be real. Football kits cost a lot of money. So we tend to go and shop for football kits in a certain market. I won't say which one, but it's in Camden. And, uh, and that's where we'll go and buy our football kits from. Now, the one I was going to bring is a great example of this beautiful red Liverpool football kit. But it's a few years old. And, and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, like the sponsor markings and the badge and all that has kind of washed away and disappeared. And I wanted to hold it up as an example and go, hey, when we bought this, it looked great. It looked fantastic, but it didn't last. It didn't last. A few washes and those, all those stickers disappeared. They got washed away. And it, I, I still make him wear it because it's still got a Liverpool badge on it somewhere, but it isn't, it isn't what it used to be. If we build a church in our own strength, and even if we come together and use our collective intellect to build something, and it's great, it, it won't be authentic. And it will only last a certain amount of time. It'll be like that faux shirt. It won't be authentic. But we don't want to build a church which is a monument to what we can do. We want to, we want to see the bride of Christ, the body of Christ built in London in a way that it is transformational. And we want it to be authentic and not something that will die out, but something that will impact lives, not just today, but for generations. How are we going to do that? What is the vision for this year? Well, it's going to start in prayer. We've got four steps. Uh, and the first one, it's written on the banners there, is follow Jesus. This isn't a new vision. This is something which we've always wanted to do. But you can't follow Jesus without prayer. We can't follow Jesus if we are not living a life of prayer. Uh, if, if you're in a car with, with a sat-nav, sat you need to pay attention to the sat-nav to, sat to know where you're going. And that's like prayer. Uh, in the summer, my... Uh, Tasha and I and our kids, we were in France on holiday for a couple of weeks and my parents came out because it was my mum's 70th birthday and we were going to celebrate celebrate in France together. But unfortunately, there was a major issues with the air, uh, with all of the airlines in the UK flying out of here. And it meant that they couldn't get the plane they were going to get. They got one to Bordeaux, which was about a three-hour drive away from us. And it landed in the middle of the night. And so Tasha and I got the kids in the car we had rented and we drove to get them uh, three hours there, uh, three hours back. But this was France. It was, we were driving on the wrong side of the road. Uh, there's no street lights. It's dark. Uh, we didn't know where we were going. And we were driving for three hours in the middle of the night. So you know what? We had to listen. We had to pay attention to that sat nav. Like, because that was the only thing we could pay attention to. It was the only guidance we had. And if we didn't listen to the sat nav, if we got distracted, even for one minute, we missed one instruction, we'd end up in the middle of nowhere and have no idea where we were. That's how it is with prayer. We want to follow Jesus, but we need to listen to his voice and we need to keep listening to his voice, intentionally pressing in. It can't be just something we do on once a week on a Sunday. It needs to be a lifestyle of prayer, of listening to Jesus so we can follow him. Uh, we, want to, we believe we need to find freedom. It's through prayer that God reveals areas we need freedom. It's in prayer that God speaks freedom over us. It's, 
through prayer, we come closer, to, we grow closer to God. And the closer to God we are, the more free we are to move without human fear, without human distraction. The closer we are, the more time we spend with God, the more time we spend in prayer with him, the bolder we will, be, we will become to share his kingdom, to build his kingdom where we live, work, and play. It's a, it's a daunting task to share God's kingdom, to tell people about Jesus, to share your faith. It really is. Like, I feel intimidated by it. it. It can be a daunting task, but the closer we are with God, the more we walk in step with him, the, the bolder will we, we will become. We will be free to do that because we walk closely with Jesus. As we, as we pray, we discover purpose. Not our individual purpose that I've got my own private destiny to do what I want but the purpose that God created each one of us for is to follow him and be in relationship with him collectively we were knit together in our mother's womb Psalm 139 says God created us on purpose and for a purpose and that purpose is to be in relationship with him and Jesus commissioned us to go and make disciples of all the world to take that relationship not keep it to ourselves but to share it with others to build his kingdom and so in order to do that, oh, when we, we, to, in order to live out his purpose, we need to decide to live fully for Jesus. We need to decide to live fully for Jesus. Um, the word decide is an interesting etymology. It's, it's actually from a Latin phrase, uh, which is de and sedra. Uh, de and sedra are two separate words. It should come up on the screen because it's quite hard to spell otherwise. De and sedra are two separate words. De means cut, uh, means off, and sedra means cut. It's actually where we get, it's the same root we get the word homicide from or suicide it means to cut off and so the side it doesn't the the sager the side it doesn't just mean to get rid of it means it kind of means to kill it means to kill off so if we decide to follow jesus it means we have to decide not to do other things in our life we need to kill off the other options so if we choose to follow jesus we need to choose not to do other things Tasha a few weeks ago said about uh, a rhythm of prayer. If we want to have a prayer life where we, we pray in the mornings, which, which I think is a, a, golden, a golden good advice, a golden good advice, that makes no sense, which is golden good advice, something which I'd encourage us to do to start our day with prayer, which is why we have our 6.45 a.m. prayer meeting on Zoom as a community. But to do that, to choose to do that, we need to choose not to watch another episode on Netflix, right? We need to choose to be in bed earlier. We need to choose not to do something so we can do this thing. We need to choose not to have a lot of things going on in our lives, not necessarily bad things, not necessarily sins, but stuff going on in our lives, which are priorities over choosing to follow Jesus. We need to choose to follow Jesus. And when we choose to follow Jesus and live this life of prayer, we will make a difference. Or maybe, maybe put it a different way, God will make a difference through us. Our lives will have an impact that we will see other people's lives transformed. We will see this world changed because we're allowing Jesus to work through us. And all of that happens through prayer. I've gone way over my time, so I'm going to wrap up. Um, that's our vision. Our vision is prayer. I believe we've got a call to prayer, a call as a community to stop striving, stop trying to do it in our own strength. And I'm very much speaking to me right now but to pray, to come before the true and living God and pray. Can I invite the team to come back up? So 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says this, if, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. We need to pray. We need to return to him in prayer. Can I invite you to stand with me? So in 2024, let's pray. So I, this is an invitation. This, it's, it's an invitation that as part of our community, we want you to join us in prayer. Not just saying a prayer, but living a lifestyle of prayer. On Sundays, we pray together. Every morning, weekdays, Monday to Friday, we pray 6.45 to 7 a.m. on Zoom. We pray in our community groups. 
Hey, we meet up to pray for one another. We live lives where prayer is at the center of what we do. And it's only when prayer is at the center of what we do can we see God's kingdom come the way we want it to come. Can we see all the things we hope for happen? So I'm gonna, I want to invite you to pray. I'm going I'm to pray in a second. I just want to mention the thing which was on your sheets before I do. You saw a map maybe on your seats when you came in, a sheet with a picture of a map. I want to encourage you to put that up somewhere. Take it home, put it up somewhere, maybe in your house, maybe on your fridge, maybe in your office. Somewhere where you can use it as a prompt to pray over London on a regular basis. Let's pray for our city. Then on the back, there are three steps you can do, you can take. You can ask God for one thing that you want to see happen in London. And you can choose to consistently pray for it. Then you can ask God about one area in your life in the church life that you will commit to, that you'll step up in. Maybe it's serving, maybe it's attending community groups, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, being up for leading a community group in the future. I don't know what it is, but ask God where it is you can step up in the life of church. And the third one is to ask God, and this is important, ask God to show you what maybe you should give in the, in the vision offering. Say to God, okay, God, I don't know what I should give. Can you give me a number? And I'll be in faith for that, to give that. These are three areas you can pray, three ways you can get more involved this year as we step into what God has got for us. I'm going to pray and we'll go back into a time of worship. Father God, Father God, we just pray that you will build your kingdom, that we won't build it in our strength, that you will build it in your strength. That the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That the millions of people in this city who are lost, who are hurting, who are in pain, who have got no direction will discover you and find that what they need in their lives is you and your kingdom will come and your will will be done in Jesus name. I pray this. Amen. Amen. Amen.